The duke's daughter was the most beautiful girl in the empire. Why did the duke's daughter roll across the pumpkin patch? She had been reincarnated into the world as a lowly commoner. She knew everything that happened in this story. Now she could use this knowledge to buy a house and earn a lot of money. This is what she thought. But it was a foolish dream. The rich get richer, and the poor get poorer. The same unfair logic applied here too. In the next scene, Daisy asked what was going on. The other person asked if she was Daisy Heidi. She thought she had a bad feeling about this. Polyp was crying and said he was so sorry. The other person stated, So she is Daisy. Please come with us. Duke Henston is waiting. Daisy was shocked. Did she just say Henstone? What were they doing? Please wait. At least tell her what's going on. Polyp was shouting, Don't worry, Daisy. Duke is the most noble man in the city. Then, in the carriage, Daisy thought if she ever got her hands on that idiot, but why would they take her? Duke doesn't appear in the story directly, but he is known as the most powerful figure. Someone like him would never associate himself with a commoner like her or Polyp, but there is another reason she is so nervous. Duke is the father of the female protagonist. At the Duke mansion, Daisy was shocked. His mansion looked like some kind of palace. She should get down on her knees. It's better than looking arrogant. Duke spoke. Have a seat. Daisy replied she was more comfortable there. Duke stated he wouldn't ask again. She should listen carefully and only respond when he asked a question. Duke spoke. So, Daisy Heidi, 24 years old, an orphan with no family, and her hometown is unknown. She used to work at Shea Noose restaurant by the quay. Daisy replied she still worked there. Duke said, not anymore, she were just fired. Daisy was shocked. What do he mean? Fired, that's her only source of income. Duke stated, then use this for this month's rent. Does it look familiar? He is sure it does. Her foolish friend sold it at the jewelry store, reporting it as loot. She must know by now that trading stolen goods is a grave offense in Pontypool. He won't tolerate rats running around freely in his establishment. He has to exterminate them, either with poison or hunters. Only then will his mind be at ease. It turns out she was the one who gave him the necklace. Where did she get this? Answer him. Let's go back in time for a bit. Before she met Duke, one day, Polyp came and was crying. That he wanted to say something, Daisy stated. Just tell her from over there. Polyp replied that he had to move house with his mother but he had no money, and now his house was worth way less than what he paid for. His mother was sick, and he was so worried. Daisy asked why he was telling her. He knew she didn't have money, Polyp spoke. He didn't even realize she was so heartless. His mother was really having a hard time, and she is right, he should not have said anything. Daisy thought about poor mama. Then she said, stop crying and take this, Polyp asked. What is this? He said she was the most beautiful and kind-hearted lady. Daisy told him she was going to help him out this once. If someone like him or she is caught with this, they will think they stole it. So even if it's worthless, don't sell it at a jewelry store. Back in the present time, she thought that idiot did the same thing. Duke stated he said he needed emergency funds to purchase a carriage for his girlfriend. Tell him where she got the necklace from. Daisy replied there was an auction. She scraped together everything she owned, and she didn't do anything illegal. Duke spoke, that's strange. The previous owner of this necklace passed away recently. Only a few acquaintances would have known about the auction for the disposal of the deceased property. How was a commoner with no connections able to stumble upon that auction? Daisy thought it was because she knew everything about this world. Duke stated she was testing his patience, or maybe she would talk after he threw her in jail. Daisy said she was going to tell him everything. Chapter 1 is called, All They Need to Know About the World of This Tragic Novel. There are a lot of descriptions about Pierre de Henstone, the protagonist of the story. Daisy told him everything about this world and its secrets until the sun began to set. Duke spoke. This is a world in a book, how amusing. Daisy thought he believed her, well, at least the hard part is over. Duke asked, What's the title of the book? Daisy replied, why did the duke's daughter roll across the pumpkin patch? Duke stated, strange, his daughter would never go anywhere near a farm. 
Daisy thought that's not what it means, sir, the title needed to be attention-grabbing. She became the devil chef, a remarried empress, he had never heard of these titles. How mortifying. She knew she wrote it, she is the author of this book, then she stated it's particular, isn't it? She wondered why she chose that title. Actually, that was written by ten authors and read only by them. The book contains the fantasies of ten friends and was created and written for fun. The story was filled with all their hopes and desires. One day, she lost consciousness from all the smoke. When she opened her eyes, she was in the novel. Duke spoke. So she was saying that his daughter is the protagonist. Well, his daughter is the female lead. It's not surprising. But what is tragic in the novel? He is curious. Daisy thought about how she was supposed to tell him about the story of his daughter's greed and pleasure. Then she stated, a tragic novel alludes to devastation and misfortune. She is not sure how she should tell him this, she apologized. Duke asked, so it's not a happy story, that makes me wonder who the male lead is. Daisy replied, she mean the male characters his daughter will meet, there are ten in total. Duke stated, how dare they? It's not enough that they approach his daughter, but they even make her the victim of tragedy. He can't let that happen. He better nip these ten suitors in the bud. He won't let those devils corrupt his daughter. Daisy thought he was going to silence all of them. Many of them are from prominent families. If he makes enemies out of all of them, he might even have to start a war to protect his daughter. Daisy asked, why not use her instead? She will protect her. She the original author so she can change the future, she won't let his daughter meet any of them. Duke asked, and if she fail, Daisy replied, then he can take her life, Duke spoke, her life is not important to him. A maid came and told him, sorry to disturb, but it's past the promised time, Duke spoke. How could he forget about his time with Pierda over something like this? Daisy thought they were just talking about the secrets of this world. Duke stated, she said she can protect her, all right, he will let her meet Pierda as well, but does she really think she can protect her better than him, he is going to give her one chance. In the next scene, Duke spoke, he will introduce her as the new nanny candidate, but that doesn't mean he is going to hire her, he will speak lightly to everyone in front of his daughter, so better get used to it. After some time, Duke asked, did she wait long, he is here with the nanny candidate, she can call her Daisy. Pierda introduced herself. Daisy thought, is this short-haired little girl really Pierda, the female protagonist of the tragic novel? Duke spoke, look how much her hair has grown, Daisy thought she reminded her of a chestnut burr, she wanted to touch it too, but if she did, she would definitely be punished. Daisy stated, nice to meet her, lady, can she join her tea party, she have only green frog candies. Daisy thought that she was the one who put in the most work developing Pierda's character with things she likes, such as colors and frogs, she knew all of them. Duke asked if she would like to have a tea party with the new nanny candidate, Pierda replied, yes, she does. After that, at the tea party, Daisy said, these are for the little lady, she can eat any of them, she thought Pierda is so cute, she want to touch her hair, that soft and fluffy hair probably feels so good. Duke stated that they should get ready for dinner now and thanked her for the delicious treats. Daisy thought he wanted to wrap it up, but she wouldn't let him end it here. Then she said, it's a pumpkin candy. She can eat it tomorrow, Pierda stated. Pumpkin, wow. Daisy thought she knew it. She thought of Pierda's favorite place in the book, a place that soothed her whenever she was struggling, an endless pumpkin patch. Pierda hugged her and asked if she liked pumpkins as well. Daisy replied, of course, she got it properly unless there is a pumpkin dish. Then she thought she might have exaggerated a little bit, Pierda is so cute, and she wanted to touch her hair, she almost had it. Then Duke spoke, saying he is going to find a nanny she loves, Pierda said, but she likes her, she likes nanny Daisy. Then Daisy thought, if Pierda thinks he is her nanny, then she is her nanny. Thank God the Duke does anything his daughter wants. Next scene, Duke stated that considering what has happened, they should rediscuss some things. She became a fake nanny. They will pretend she is a nanny. 
her actual job will be to stop her daughter from meeting the male suitors. Daisy thought she guessed that's better in a way. Now that the offer is on the table, she should negotiate, then she said, that's fine, whatever works for him, as long as she receive fair wages. Duke stated, why didn't he draft a contract outlining the terms while they are at it? First, she will live here. Those suitors could come sniffing around while she is absent. Second, he will give her ten times her wages for each suitor she stops. He will pay her weekly. Daisy thought about this being her weekly pay. After that, Duke asked her to write down everything she knew about the suitors. She thought that even though Pierda won't meet the male characters until much later in the future, it seems she has already started to worry. Duke said, Oh God, Lord of the Magical Tower, Knight Commander's only son, how could the Imperial family also be involved? The Imperial family and the Lord of the Magical Tower, the real male lead was likely one of these two, Duke asked, but why are there only five names here? Daisy replied, they have quite complicated names, so she don't remember all of them, but she will be able to recognize them if she see them in person. Duke replied that he will host an event tomorrow and invite all the noble families, Daisy said, so there is an event tomorrow, that works out well. Duda stated, he will need to start sending out invitations right now. Daisy thought the current time was 10 p.m., but it's already so late. The next day, the total number of guests, including their companions, is 150. Daisy thought her attire had been made. Her second life as the fake nanny for the greatest duke in the empire, living in luxury alongside an aristocratic family, she had always wanted to go to a fancy ball. That's what she thought. Why was she working as a maid? Then she thought Duke told her that nannies generally don't attend such events, there is no reason for them to. This is the only way she will be able to go about the ballroom without arousing suspicion. Also, she is not an actual nanny, she has only pretended to be a maid. Duke wondered if she was really trying to become a maid, Daisy saw Duke and thought he was ignoring her when this was all his fault, she had had enough of this. Then Daisy was shocked and thought, isn't he? And then, remember she asked, are not red eyes a bit too aggressive? Her friend told her he is a really famous scholar, her male character must have red eyes. Now back in present time, she thought she found one, an absolute genius that only comes along once every few centuries, after the young scholar meets Pierda, he gives up all of his academic success and achievements, a suitor, but he has not even been born yet. Suddenly, Marcus Loebner bumps into her, then he said, why is there a pregnant woman at this party? She will just get in everyone's way with her sluggish body. Then his daughter came and stated, but she hates children, how could he ask her to be a mother? Marcus replied, what is he talking about, who asked her to be a mother? She can leave it to the nanny or governess, they will grow up on their own. The duke has been a bachelor for several years now. He is probably thinking about remarrying. Daisy thought she had to admit she was curious, who was Pierda's mother, it's probably rude to ask the duke. Daisy told them to please wait a moment, she will bring her a chair, after that, she asked the countess if she was alright, the countess asked if she had met her before. Daisy replied, yes, the duke tell her to keep an eye on her since she is with child, he wanted to make sure she was taken care of. Then, after some time, a person stated, what a young thing she is, she is new around here, does the duke pay her well, she sure is pretty, if not, he can personally help her out himself, they should help each other. But suddenly, Daisy hit him with a plate, then she thought she screwed up, he stood up and started shouting. Duke asked, what's all this commotion about, the person stated, his late duke is here, look what she did to him, lowlifes like her always show their true nature. He needs to fire her, she doesn't know her place. Duke stated, if she really wanted to make a scene, she should have used this, and he should watch his mouth, he will not stand by and watch someone act so rudely towards one of his people. Daisy thought, what did he mean by his people? Then Duke spoke, it's time to escort their guests home, he hopes they don't run into each other again. After some time, Marcus stated his daughter just turned 21, Time goes by so fast, Belle thought. Wow, 
How can a man be so beautiful? Who cares if he has a kid? Then she stated, Can she call him Dane? She would gladly have someone she can talk to. Duke stated, Excuse me for a moment. Both of them wondered where he was going. Duke whispered that he saw her speaking with Countess Lapel. Daisy replied, Yes, that's right. Duke told her to come see him in the study at the party. After some time, Daisy thought, This place is massive. There is no end to cleaning it. By the way, where is Pierda? It's a party for adults, but usually, the host will introduce their children. Daisy went to her room and saw she was lying on the bed. Daisy thought she was so adorable. Then she asked if Pierda was upset. Pierda replied, Is she the only one who can't go out? She wanted to play on the second floor today, but he said she can't because of the party. Daisy asked if she would like to go there now. Then, on the second floor, Pierda was happy and stated it's a party in the mirror room. She had always wanted to have a party there. It's so beautiful at night. Daisy asked her if her father didn't allow her to come out. She should be more persistent next time. She is sure he will listen to her. Pierda replied, No, uncle didn't stop her. She just didn't want to. People keep trying to touch her hair. Daisy said it's because her hair reminds people of a cute chestnut. Suddenly, Daisy stood up and said, Wait. Pierda stated, But only people she has allowed can touch her hair. Uncle can, but Daisy can't yet. Daisy thought, Uncle, so Duke is Pierda's uncle. How could there be something the author doesn't know? Then it was night, and Daisy thought, What a long day. She worked a lot more than she thought she would. She still can't believe the Duke is her uncle. Then she remembers she would ask Pierda why she calls the Duke father. Pierda replied, If she doesn't, then uncle will be sad. Daisy thought, after seeing the look on her face, she could not ask any further. Who would have thought there would be secrets about her birth that even the writer doesn't know? Then Duke came and asked why she was here. Daisy was half asleep but thought, Who is it? His voice sounds so nice. Duke spoke, so she has no intention of getting up. The next day, Daisy told him that Countess Lapel's baby will be one of the suitors. She had written down his traits, Duke said. He is not even born yet. How bothersome. How does he meet Pierda? Daisy replied. He becomes her private tutor. He is younger than her, but he is a genius who became a professor at 20 years old. Duke asked, why would the eldest son of the Lapel family need to work as a private tutor? Daisy replied, to pay for his studies abroad. The Lapel family's financial situation doesn't get much better in the future. Then he falls for the beautiful Pierda. She can't believe he throws everything away when his parents are struggling. That's why a person can never count on their kids. Daisy glanced at Duke, then she stated, Of course, she don't mean that Pierda is bad. Then she asked, Is he her uncle? Duke was shocked and asked how she knew. Daisy replied, His daughter told her, then she thought, she and her big mouth, she already regret telling him all about the novel. Duke told her to read this. Daisy read the paper with many pages and complicated explanations, but one thing stood out to her, Henstone family Furren 15 years sealed to the title of Duke, ninth generation Dane Henstone, family relation, daughter Pierre de Henstone. Duke spoke, whatever anyone says, she is his daughter, if this information gets out. Daisy replied, she promised she will keep his secret, whether she is his biological daughter or not is not important, since he is still the person that cares for her and loves her the most. Duke got the book out, and the next moment, a big wardrobe appeared. Duke told her he brought her everything she would like, it's hard to store all of it. Daisy thought, they all look new, she must not have worn any of them. Duke spoke, she never lets anyone dress her, not even him. Daisy stated, she loves to run around, so long dresses won't be comfortable, she is sure Pierda knows how much he care. Duke replied, that's amazing, she is young but still wants to wear comfortable clothes, it means she is practical. Daisy thought, he seems to be in a better mood now, that's a relief, but what do they do about the eldest son of Lapel? Then, after some time, Daisy thought, the Duke sure loves his daughter. Her neck is sore from nodding in agreement, so she can take a rest. 
Then, after a few hours, Daisy thought, why is it so noisy out there? The party is over. There shouldn't be anything else planned today. The maid told her that the duke asked them to prepare a grand formal dinner, but they are still clearing up from last night. They are kind of in an emergency situation because the duke has guests coming tonight. She heard it was a count and his wife. Daisy thought, he just told him about that suitor this morning. Did he invite them as soon as he heard? She should have realized when he sent those party invitations out the day before, he will do whatever it takes. She wondered what he was plotting, and more importantly, why didn't he tell her? Then, after some time, she thought, she didn't get the chance to see him at all today. At this point, she has no choice, she will just have to see for herself. This can be her way in. All that hard work last night paid off. The Duke rarely rolls out the red carpet like this. What is he up to? The Count asked. He don't understand why he would make them an offer like that. Duke told him the reason behind his offer is quite simple. He has read the research reports that he has registered at the Academy. They were brilliant. The product of a scholar from a long line of academics, he could not just stand by and watch such talent go to waste. The Count spoke. To be honest, he has always earnestly wanted to be a caller, but he is also the head of a household, and he is not that young anymore, with a child on the way. Duke stated he understood. He would have put his family first as well, the Count replied, but he never imagined the Duke would write a letter of recommendation for him to the Tishton Empire Academy. Duke told him he would provide the relocation cost and housing support so he can start researching as soon as possible. Titan is a considerable distance away, so he will do his best to ensure that the lady does not experience any discomfort. He will be provided with the highest class cabin and a professional physician. The lapels expressed their gratitude all night until they left in the carriage. Then Daisy asked, Why is he sending them abroad? Duke replied, Didn't she say she will want to study abroad in the future anyway, so he is just sending them early? What's wrong with that? The next day, Daisy asked if he moved everything from her house, Duke replied, didn't she get it yet, it should have arrived yesterday. Daisy thought she was going back there if she got fired from here, if she goes back to work at the restaurant, the house was perfect since it was nearby. Duke asked what's wrong, he thought she was not in the position to pay monthly rent at a place she is not even staying at, Daisy replied, but if he kicks her out. Duke interrupted, asking why would he do that? He wouldn't have called her one of his people if he was going to kick her out that easily. Also, she knows a huge secret. Did she think he was going to let her go that easily? Daisy thought, his people. Dot she thinks referring to his hired staff as his people is a bad habit of Duke. After that, Hattie told her the butler received her things, and he will ask him to bring them here right away. Daisy thought, come to think of it, this character didn't appear in the original book. Hattie asked, what's the matter? Daisy replied, it's nothing. Then she thought, he doesn't seem like a bad person, but he seems to see through her in a weird way. She may have written this, but there are so many things that she doesn't know. So, after some time, the butler came and stated that was a lot of work. Daisy apologized, and then she said, please let her handle this. The butler threw her luggage away, saying, why do he have to wait on this insignificant woman? This lady is good for nothing. Daisy thought, why is he so angry? She should just let it go, she apologized. The next moment, Pierre de came, and the butler spoke. It's been a while. What was that? He saw she was running here in that unladylike manner. The butler continued, a young lady must be modest and proper. She is no longer a baby. She should learn to conduct herself properly. If she keeps this up, she might never get married. She may still be single in her thirties, as he have told her, women's value depreciates as soon as she reaches the age of twenty-one. Daisy thought, what the hell is he talking about? He may be a butler, but he should not be allowed to talk to her like this. She then asked, what is he saying to the lady? The butler shouted, is she not new here? How dare she speak out like that? Daisy replied, how could she possibly just stand here while he spews nonsense like that? The butler stated how ridiculous it is, and tell Pierda that if she doesn't behave, she will turn like this ignorant woman. 
Daisy shouted. What does he mean by behave? And who is he to tell the duke's daughter about marriage? How could he say that to a child, that women start to lose their value at twenty-one? What is he saying, old geezer? The butler shouted back. Who did she think she is? Daisy replied. She is the new nanny. The butler questioned. Nanny, what is her game here? Does she think he didn't see her working as a maid during the party? Pierda stated. She is right. She is not lying. Butler asked if she is the lady nanny. Daisy replied. Yes, she is, then thought. A fake and temporary one. But still, who cares? Better speak. If she is lying, she will be fired from this mansion and will never work anywhere else again. Daisy replied, If he doesn't believe her, then why doesn't he ask the Duke himself? He can't do it. Also, if she gets fired, she will make sure he gets what he deserves before she goes. Listen carefully. If he wants to survive in this mansion, first, don't ever say something like that to Lady Pierda ever again. Second, if he disrespects women ever again, she will break both of his legs, and last, get out of this room now. After that, Daisy thought he still won't apologize, what an old geezer. Pierda asked if she is angry, Daisy replied she is not angry, Pierda stated, Grandpa is always like that with her, it's all her fault, she apologizes. Daisy replied, don't be sorry, don't be scared, her dad is the boss around here. How dare they be so rude to her? Pierda told her that everybody says similar things to what Grandpa said. They said that her clothes are not pretty and that her hair is weird, it's too short. If she asks her dad if that's true, she won't ever see them again. She won't tell dad what just happened. She will be really sad if she never sees Daisy again. Daisy thought, did they all look at her the way that old geezer did? Do they think she was obscured or strange? She probably thinks it's her fault since it keeps happening. Daisy said, let's do this, from now on, if something like this happens again, tell her, not her dad, if she tells her dad, people might get scared and not come back, but with her, it will be fine. Pierda asked if she tell Daisy, they won't leave, and Daisy won't leave, Daisy replied, of course not, she will always be by her side. She promises. Pierda asked if she wants to touch her hair. Daisy is awesome and very kind to her. Now that they share a secret, they are friends, and friends can touch her hair. Daisy thought she is glad Pierda is feeling better, so, they are now buddies. The next day, Pierda stated, Look Daisy here, Daisy stated, That's a tree, but why is it so discolored? Then she thought, Is it normally this color? It looks like the roots have rotted. It doesn't seem like it has been neglected though. Pierda spoke. They told her that her mom planted this tree a long time ago, because she thought it would look nice, that's what the gardeners told her. Daisy thought, so that's why they are still maintaining it despite it being in a bad state. Pierda gave her flowers, Daisy stated, she gets it now, she wanted to show her this place because it's important to her. Pierda replied, that's right, she knows her so well. Then she said her heart is beating fast again, and she is not going to tell her. Daisy thought, what a cute child. After some time, Daisy stated, she wonders where she is. Then she was shocked, and saw the bees were coming toward her. Daisy picked her up and ran toward the mansion, trying her best to cover Pierda. It was very painful for her. In the next scene, the doctor stated fortunately Pierda wasn't stung by any poisonous bees, so she will be all right. He only had to remove a couple of stingers, so they don't need to worry. After that, Daisy said she is sorry. She thought she should have covered Pierda more so she wouldn't get stung. No, she should not have let her go near that unfamiliar burrow in the first place. Duke said, Take that off. The shawl. Remove it. It's not even cold, but she is trembling. Daisy replied, It's nothing. Duke removed her shawl. Duke was shocked to see her condition. Daisy replied she is fine, and then fainted. Then at night, Duke stated if she will allow him, then he would apply ointment, Duke spoke, he apologizes, she got hurt because of Pierda. Daisy thought, no, it's her, she should be sorry for getting Pierda hurt, she cried so much, how could she let that happen? She understands if he wants to fire her, 
then she went to sleep. Duke remembered the doctor said she could have been seriously hurt, he is surprised she didn't pass out, it must have been extremely painful for her, he doesn't know how she made it back to the mansion in that state. Duke spoke, don't worry, he will have the doctor on standby until she gets better. After some time, Duke stated, Hattie, call in the gardeners. The next scene, Pierda was crying for the tree, Duke told her he had no choice, it was too dangerous, she was badly hurt yesterday, Pierda replied it didn't hurt, it's not dangerous at all. Duke stated, what, not dangerous at all, Nanny Daisy was in a lot of pain because of the bees, can't she see her shoulder? Pierda apologized to Daisy and asked where did it hurt, it's all because of her, Duke asked, as long as she understands it's time for breakfast. Pierda replied, Uncle, she hates him, Duke was shocked. After some time, Daisy stated, This is her favorite breakfast, Pierda replied that tree was special. Daisy thought she knew how much that tree meant to her after yesterday, she probably held on to that tree even more because she can't remember her mother, perhaps it was the same for the Duke as well, he tried his best to keep that tree alive all this time. Pierda spoke, Daisy is all she has got now, Daisy asked, what about her dad, Pierda replied, they might have to run away together, Daisy thought, oh no, this is gonna get messy. After some time, Duke asked, he kept referring to him as her uncle, more importantly, she knew all about the tree, he had no idea. No wonder she cried so much, this is going to last a while. The next day, little Pierda avoided speaking to the Duke all day, Duke stated, he apologizes, he thoughtlessly cut down the tree she cared about so much. Pierda replied, the tree was special to her, Duke told her the tree was special to him also, but he can't let her or Nanny get hurt again, they both are more important to him than the tree. They can get a bigger and better tree, and they can plant a new one in the same spot, Pierda spoke, it won't be the same. No matter how pretty the tree is, it's not that tree, he doesn't understand anything. Daisy thought, if only she didn't mess up, the Duke looked like he would start crying right then and there. Then at night, Daisy spoke, there's something she wanted to talk about, things like this will happen again in the future, she thinks Pierda will have an easier time letting it go if she were able to focus on something else. She told him she would change Pierda's future, she has a friend she wants to introduce to her, she lives nearby, and she is the same age as Pierda, she is a supporting female character in the book. If she spends time with friends her age, she may be able to overcome her attention to her mother more easily. Also, this character is the only person in the original story that Pierda wants to get close to, but unfortunately, they are unable to become friends. There is a suitor who tries to isolate Pierda and keep her to himself, his obsession over Pierda drives a wedge between the two women, so, if they can bring them together now and give them space, there should be no problem. Daisy thought Duke seems intrigued, then she speaks, of course, she knows that young ladies don't run around with their friends, they will mostly get to know each other and have tea time, things like that. Duke asks if she doesn't have any friends even when she is older, even if they go along with what she suggests, what if they don't become friends and Pierda becomes even more heartbroken? Daisy replies she is sure they will get close, the other girl is very clever and bright, and she has a reserved and timid side, when she meets Pierda, she will be drawn to her more outgoing and lively personality. Class Pierda's birthday is coming up. Duke asks, what is the name of that child? Daisy replies, she is the second daughter of Marquis Fransov, Lady Rodizen. After some time, she thought the more estranged they become, the more there was for her to do in between. Pierda won't even look at the Duke, so all he does around the mansion now is trail after Pierda, who is always following her around. Daisy thinks there is something she learned while working as a babysitter back in the day, then she whispers the plan to him. The next day, Daisy thinks this is a method she learned from a mother in her previous life, to smooth things over between her daughter and husband. She told the child, look at mummy holding daddy's hand, do she want to hold daddy's hand too? The mother told her it didn't even take a day for her daughter to forgive her husband. Daisy speaks to Pierda, 
Should we say good morning to daddy too? Did he sleep well? Sir. Duke was blushing and replies, thanks to her. Daisy thinks he said he would not get all embarrassed, then asks Pierta if she wants to greet daddy. Pierta states, good morning, then she goes away. Daisy thinks, was that too hasty? No need to despair yet. This is just the thought of them making up. But when should she let go of his hand? The next day, Pierta asks, can't she stay, Daisy? Then she grabs the purse. Duke tells her, this is not proper behavior. Bring it back now. Daisy thinks Duke tells her they have received a reply from the Fransovs. They should quickly go and visit before Pierta wakes up. Pierta gives back the purse and states she hates uncle the most. Daisy says she will be back soon, so don't worry. In the next scene, Marquis states they apologize for not attending the party due to family obligations, but what brings him here? He sees Duke has a companion and a woman, too, usually coming by alone. Duke tells him he is here today to invite his child to Pierda's birthday party. The Fransovs reply they were aware it's his daughter's birthday soon, they send her a gift every year, of course, but this is the first invitation they have received. They must accept he has come all the way to invite them, and they will be there no matter what, they then introduce their sons. Duke states he is here to see his daughter, he would like to exclusively invite his second daughter, Lady Rodazan, to this party, of course, it would be wonderful if other children could attend. But this is their first party with an invitation to a friend, and they would like to keep it small, he'll understand. Then Rodazan comes, and Daisy thinks this child is so adorable. Duke speaks, it's a pleasure to meet her. He is here because he would really like to invite her to Pierda's birthday party. She was the only guest, but rest assured she will have a great time. Rodazan asks again if she can really go without her brothers. Daisy says she is kind of like their little Pierda and then states that, of course, Pierda will be so happy to see her, they will become friends quickly, and there will be lots of delicious treats and things to do, she promises. Rodazan says she would come, she would like to. In the next scene, Pierda states, Daisy, come back quickly, she knew Daisy wouldn't lie, and this is the gift for keeping her promise, Daisy suggests, why don't she give Daddy a kiss too? Pierda replies, but daddy has been with her these days, she can give daddy a kiss, both of them shocked, and Pierda asks why Daisy is not going to. Daisy thinks she has no choice for the sake of them making up. Let's not be nervous, this is all just for sure, it's nothing, it means nothing, after the kiss, she thinks that was way too loud. The next day, Pierda asks, who is coming, Duke replies, Lady Rodazan will be here soon to meet her the daughter of Marquis Fransov, she is the same age as her. It will be the first time she have a friend over for her birthday. Pierda speaks, wow, that's great, but she will be meeting her for the first time, what will she do? Daisy tells her, don't worry, whatever she do, she will become friends quickly. Her dad went out of his way to invite her because he wanted her to have a great time. Duke adds, it will be the best party ever, he guarantee it. We will get a new table and chairs, hire the most famous patissier to bake a cake, and get a new year of pumpkin pants tailored for the occasion. We can decorate the hall with a bunch of pumpkin dolls. After some time when Duke is leaving, Pierda grabs Daisy's leg, then went back to Daisy, and stated she confused him with Daisy for a second. Pierda hugs Daisy and whispers to pass it along to her dad. Daisy tells her that she thinks he will appreciate it more if she hugged him herself. Pierda replies that it's still too hard for her, and she asks if she can do it just this once. Daisy thinks she has no choice, and tells Duke there was a message from his daughter, she wants to say goodbye. Duke hugs her, and whispers if it's okay, he didn't want her to be the only one doing these things, and she can say no if she doesn't want to. Daisy thinks it's not that, and speaks that it's not that she doesn't want to do it, Pierda is smiling. At night, Daisy thinks about why she had to say that, why does she always say the wrong things? Pierda states that today was another fun day, Daisy tells her that maybe it's time she made up with dad, it's making him sad, if she keeps doing that, he will be really unhappy. Pierda asks if dad doesn't like her anymore, Daisy replies that, of course, 
He loves her very much, and he always will. Pierta asks if they should go say hi to Dad in his room. Daisy thinks thank God, as she decided to forgive him, and it worked, she didn't put all that embarrassment for nothing. In Duke's room, Pierta speaks that she didn't mean to make him sad, and she promises she is sorry. Duke replies that he is also sorry for cutting down the tree she loved, should he tuck her in tonight. Pierta replies, No, next time, let's do something else, since we have all made up now, let's all sleep together. Duke and Daisy are literally shocked. The next scene, Daisy thought it's time for her to admit that, she and the Duke as well are swayed too easily by Pierta's tears. Pierta asks, Dad, why is he facing the wall too? Duke replies, let's just go to sleep. Pierta states, but it's our first night sleeping together, Daisy thinks, oh no, is she upset again, and they just made up, then she speaks, she is okay with it. After some time, Pierta says, Dad, let's talk until we fall asleep, Duke replies, just go to sleep, kiddo. Daisy thinks she wasn't expecting that, then thinks she is in sleep, she asks, sir, is he asleep? Duke replies, no, he apologize, Pierta is causing so much trouble. Daisy replies, there is something she have been wanting to ask, it's about the tree that Pierta loved so much, who is her mom? The person who planted the tree. Of course, he don't need to answer if he is uncomfortable, she apologize if that was too personal. Duke replies, he don't need to apologize, of course, she could be curious. Pierta is his older sister's daughter, and their parents passed away when they were young. All their relatives were vying for their family assets, his sister and he only had each other to rely on. She was seven years older than him, when she turned twenty, she officially inherited her place as the head of the household, she tried to take over the parenting role, and he resisted it. Daisy asks, did he rebel too? Duke replies, he did cause some trouble. What Pierta does is nothing compared to what he did. He was ungrateful then, and that's why he acted out. His sister and he were both stubborn. Anyways, he owe his sister a lot. Of course, she is gone now, so he can't repay her. Daisy thinks his story touched her heart. She could sense regret and sorrow toward his sister in his voice. Then she asks, so that's why he takes such good care of her. Duke replies, yes. It was the last favor his sister asked of him. He would like to thank Daisy for all that she has been doing for us. He believed that Pierta and Hay would be okay on our own. But after meeting her, he realized that he was mistaken. Daisy thinks she waited so long for the Duke to recognize her efforts, but she never imagined that her heart would beat this fast. She doesn't know what to say. Then she speaks, it's uncomfortable, isn't it? She will get up, Duke tells her Pierta will wake up. Daisy thinks she can hear his heartbeat against her back, if she turned around now, what expression would he have? Would it be cold and stern as usual, or would his face be flushed like hers? The next day, Hattie asks if they're both unwell, Duke replies that he's just a little tired, and Daisy also says it's just fatigue, then she thinks she tried to act calm and composed, but the whole day was just a blur for her. Hattie states that the gift is from Baron Silfino when he attended the party last time, and sometimes it's nice to have some quiet adult time to de-stress. After some time, Pierta states that she was looking for Dad and Daisy, because she wants them to sleep together again. Daisy replies, what is she talking about, not tonight. Duke also says, sorry, but he is not sleeping tonight, he is working. Pierta says she doesn't want to sleep either, and suggests playing a game, she asks Duke to play too just this once. In the next scene, Daisy thinks it's a mix between Cat's Cradle and Undoing the Knot. Pierta tells Daisy she won, so she will pick a penalty card. Pierta chooses a card that requires a kiss. Daisy thinks they have to kiss the other person where the heart is, and it's a wonderful game. After some time, Pierta states that Daisy is not very good at this game. Duke says, yes, she is actually pretty bad. Daisy replies, it's her first time, let's see how well Duke does. Duke says it's his first time too, but he will probably be better than her. Pierta feels sleepy, and Hattie takes her away to get her to sleep. 
After that, the games start, and Daisy faces defeat, Duke says, don't forget the penalty, and then he is shocked, this isn't good. Daisy suggested they clean up, then she thought she needed to tidy up and get back to her room quickly, but she felt dizzy, the next moment, she was on the Duke. She didn't realize how drunk she was because she was sitting down, she apologized, saying that she would clean up the mess. Duke said he thought she fell over, because she was trying to run away without fulfilling the penalty. In that moment, Daisy thought they didn't know what they were talking about, she is someone who does what they say they're going to do, then she grabbed Duke's face. The scene changed, and Duke Dane Henstone, powerful and commanding enough to even dictate with his eyes, feared nothing. But this situation was strange, Daisy had been acting out of character today ever since this morning, she ran away every time she saw the Duke, is she avoiding him? Actually, a letter had arrived, it was from the doctor who treated Pierre and Daisy, he had extended his stay and would be able to come see Daisy, the doctor had asked if Duke would like a special scented oil that he could prepare. If it were Pierre, he would want the best care for her, and his child loves her, he just wants to make sure she is taken care of. After some time, Duke stated that he found her, is she busy right now? Daisy replied she was on her way to see Hattie, but she got lost. Duke replied that Hattie is getting ready to leave. He just wanted to say that they need to talk about it now because it might happen again. He thought he had to send a response by today, and if the weather gets warmer, bees might start to come again. Daisy replied it won't happen again, she swears on her life, Duke thought that's ridiculous, bees don't care about that. Then he told her that accidents can happen at any time and place, it was her last time, but it could be his next time, so he thinks it's best to request the scented oil from the doctor. Daisy cut his sentence and said she was really drunk last night, and she made a mistake. Duke thought she was talking about something else and wondered what she was talking about. While running away, Daisy stated she is sorry she just kissed him like that. Duke thought last night, Daisy told him she would do it, she lost, and it's her penalty. The next scene, Daisy thought, why today of all days are they going out together, this is so frustrating, Pierda stated, this is our first outing together, Daisy replied, that's right, she hope we find lots of things she like. In the store, the owner tells them they have everything they need, including decorations, dolls, and various games, Daisy thought, this store is huge. Pierda stated, Let's go, Hattie, Daisy asked. What about her, Pierda replied. No, she is gonna shop with Hattie today, Daisy thought. Why is she all alone with him? Duke stated. Actually, he asked her to join us today because he have something to give her, so let's see if that's fixed or not. Daisy thought, her necklace. Then she asked if he had it repaired, Duke replied. The jewelry at the store is quite famous. It's been in good hands, so it should be perfect. Daisy said. She thought he would have thrown it away. Thank you, Duke replied. There's no need to thank him. He is the one who broke it in the first place. She should not be so trusting from now on. She is not the best judge of character. Daisy thought. Maybe she should apologize too. She kind of just awkwardly ignored it before because she just wanted to get out of there. The next moment a person came in and speak it was him Duke, how is he, looks like he is just as handsome as he remember, then they start chatting, Daisy thought, what did he just say? Then she remembered her friend, who created one of the stories used the name of a place she would always dream of going. She was always too busy working to take the time to go there, the character she created was the greatest bandit of all time, the ultimate bad boy a heinous guild leader who dominated the back alleys. She couldn't believe he was here in that name, she had to warn him, they would be safe here, Duke asked, what's going on, are they playing hide and seek again? Daisy thought, that man looks to be around 80, so she guesses it's his grandson, not son, then she stated, no, that man he was just talking to, his grandson, is one of the suitors. Duke replied, but he's been single his whole life, everybody knows that, he earned the title of Count with his excellent swordsmanship, he never got married because he spent most of his life in battle. Daisy thought she really thinks she had something, then she spoke, 
Maybe she was mistaken. Maybe she got the wrong name, Duke replied. Still, he will look into it. At least this way, there won't be any surprises later on. Suddenly, the door opened, and Hattie and the shop owner came. Hattie asked, What are they two doing here? He have been looking for them. Daisy replied, Wait, she is sorry. It's a misunderstanding. Then at the Duke's mansion, Daisy thought, why does she feel like this always happens whenever she tries to do something? Maybe Hattie is pretending like he didn't see anything. Anyway, it looks like little Pierre has a headphone today, Daisy wondered. What is this? Wait, there is something off about these cards. Yesterday there was a heart, but today there is no heart. That's weird. She is sure it was definitely this bear and this box. It looks like someone drew on it and erased it. Then she remembered she and her friends thought. Let's make the female protagonist a puppet master. It's fun if the lead character is a puppet master who is super good at scheming, and she's gotta be Duke's daughter. Each friend added their own suitor, but when it came to the main female lead, they created the character together, and they unanimously agreed on that part. The female lead must be a perfect master who is a super schemer. The next day, Pierda stated, No, Dad, she is done. He is only supposed to drink one glass of juice per day. Could Duke and Daisy finished it? She was going to clean her room. Duke thought, is Pierre de all grown up now? He is a little sad that she is maturing so fast. Daisy thought, that's suspicious. Usually, Pierre de likes all kinds of flattery to get Duke to pour her one more glass, but she voluntarily refused another glass. She knows she is only six years old, but she will grow up to be a scheming heroine. She can't believe Pierda is using her powers of manipulation on her and Duke. If by any chance that's true, if he's involved with Duke, she will be little Pierda's stepmom, is the heroine trying to make her the new stepmom. Then, after some time, Pierda asked them to play hide and seek, and she, the seeker, hid them here herself. Duke told her that he did some research, there is nobody named Santorini in that guild, and the guild name is encrypted, so it's hard to read he thinks they rotate names. Daisy asked if he thinks Count might be hiding a child. Duke replied he tried to find that out first, but he doesn't think so, he is single for sure. He will be able to find out the location of a secret meeting. They still don't know for certain about Santorini, unless they find out about the changing guild name or come across another lead. That's why he found out the next meeting place. Daisy thought she can't believe how much she managed to find out in such a short time. Then she asked when it's all happening, the date of the meeting. Duke asked why she needs to know that. Daisy replied she knows other names besides Santorini. Her friend had a lot of places she always wanted to go. If she can be there to eavesdrop, she might be able to gather some more info. Duke stated he always strives for perfection, and he must be extra cautious because it will be dangerous. Hattie's voice came, and both of them were startled. Hattie asked the first one to find them wins. This room is definitely suspicious because she is being really unpity. Pierda replied, No, it's not that. Hattie, get out quickly. Hattie said, Let's see this one place the two of them could be hiding in together here. Pierda kicked him, and both of them were shocked. After some time, Pierda was crying and apologizing to Dad. Duke told her she should apologize to Hattie now. Daisy thought Pierda was in the wrong, but watching her cry breaks her heart, she looked so sad, and Daisy wanted to hug her. Then it was her room, Daisy thought she is exhausted even though she stayed inside all day today, she should wash up and go to bed early. She wondered if little Pierda apologized, oh, it's Hattie and little Pierda, it seems like they talked everything out, that's a relief. A few hours earlier, Pierda spoke to Hattie, she apologized for kicking him. Hattie replied he is quite all right. Lady, it didn't hurt, but she has been acting strange lately. Why is he trying to get Duke and Daisy alone all the time? Does she not like being with Daisy anymore? Pierda replied no. She likes Daisy a lot. Daisy is her favorite. Hattie replied he likes Daisy too. Pierda was shocked that Hattie and Daisy, Pierda told him no she is going to marry her dad. Hattie thought he knew it, then told her not to worry, he is on her side, her dad and Daisy must be together, 
she has done a great job as their matchmaker. Pierre de replied, but Daisy kept running away, it was so frustrating. Hattie told her that she was trying to force the wrong approach. That's why it was so hard. For love to grow between men and women, they must be interested in each other. Pierre de replied that, of course, Dad likes Daisy, she liked her from the beginning, and everybody likes her too. Hattie agreed with this, so the Duke likes Daisy. What about Daisy? They don't know what Daisy is thinking. Didn't Pierre de say Daisy kept running away the other day? Pierre de thought Dad likes Daisy for sure, but whether Daisy likes him back is uncertain. Then she asked if he could help her, he is close to Dad, and he is an adult, so how can they get Daisy to like Dad? Hattie thought, of course, he will help. Getting involved in other people's love affairs is always entertaining. Then he said, little lady, let's do this first. This will be their little secret, it's a sensitive issue so it should only kept between them. Well, they will be farming an alliance from now on. It means they will be partners and work on a big project together, getting the Duke married. Pierre to speak now he can touch her hair three times, Hattie asked really. She didn't let him touch it before, Pierre to reply but they are partners now. Hattie thought the little lady is so adorable, in this moment a master scheme was born. The next day Pierre de shouted she is here, Daisy asked why is she up already? Pierre de her friend is coming today. Dad came by a moment go too, he said he was he could not sleep. Daisy thought it's not surprising he didn't sleep well, today is little Pierre de birthday, and it's the first time she will be making a friend. Pierre de asked what is this? Daisy replied this is her present. Daisy thought Pierre de seems to be in a great mood today, she looks happy and excited. And there was a pumpkin cake, she was so happy. After some time Count and her wife came, Daisy thought why they are come, it's only invitation for Lady Rodizen. Count wife asked what is she doing, say hello to the Duke. Daisy thought how can she greet anyone behind that ridiculous skirt, she can't believe this, the little Pierda waited so long for this moment, how dare they ruin her birthday party. Normally parents would understand the situation and just send along a nanny, or set a time to pick the child up later, who do they think this party is for? Duke asked have he brought his invitation, Count reply oh yes here it is. Duke read it only Lady Rodizen name is on the invitation, inviting themselves to an event for which they have not received a proper invitation is implied. Why don't they get back in the carriage? Once the meddling parents left, they were finally able to greet Lady Rodizen properly. Daisy say hi in whisper. Daisy thought since when were she so shy little Pierda. Rodizen made whisper her this is the time she should give it to her. Daisy thought that's right doing their first encounter. Rodizen asked her what does Pierda like, and she remember the color green. Duke picked both of them and stated so now shall they go inside. Daisy thought she imagined the two little ones as adults, to be more exact, as two adults exchanging cold, contemptuous glances, in the original story, that will never happen, now she hopes. Unlike in the original book, the two will become close friends, the plot is changing, and she is not sure what will come, but she is more excited than afraid. Pierda is doing her best to serve her friend before the party begins. Before that, she tells them no matter what happens, do not disturb them. Duke asks if she can hear what they are saying, Daisy replies, no, nothing. Then she speaks that they are coming this way, the next moment they are going to get in the cupboard. Duke stated she is super excited, it will be hard to get her to go to bed tonight. He heard the countess gave birth yesterday, it's a healthy boy, looks just like his parents, red eyes and all. Daisy replies, wow, wonderful. When he invited the couple, she was worried something might happen. Duke asks if she thought he might do something, did she have no idea what he was going to do? Daisy replies, how could she know that? Duke speaks that he thought they knew each other quite well, but he guessed not, and one more thing, the guild they have their eyes on will have this secret meeting soon, he heard that it's tomorrow. Daisy thought, tomorrow, she guesses they should be glad. It was not the same day as Pierda's birthday, but it's good to think the meeting is taking place so. Duke states it's not something to get that excited about, he is more worried for her than she is, 
Daisy thought she had this feeling before, maybe she is mistaken, and it's totally unlike, but does he have feelings for her? Pierre de came and stated, so there they are, are they not the adults, why don't they listen? Then at the party hall, everyone at the mansion took part in the party, Pierre de stated, okay, everyone, come, then they all entered the mirror room. Daisy and Rodizen were shocked, pumpkins all around, a chandelier with baby pumpkins, it's a total pumpkin lover's heaven, Daisy thought, this is amazing. Wait, what is that? Like this video. Hit the like button and subscribe for more videos.